If you've seen the hand hygiene clip, you'll know by now that good hand hygiene is the single most important thing you can practice to reduce the spread of harmful bugs. What I want to talk to you about now are some of the other important elements of infection control. Let's start by taking a look at environmental hard surface disinfection using microbiocides, cleaning chemicals. If you have purchasing responsibilities for places like hotels, cruise ships, hospitals and care homes, known in infection control circles as outbreak settings, how do you select the microbiocides you use? Do you look at the label, listen to the manufacturer's or supplier's claims that a product kills 99% of all known germs? Or do you simply commit the most heinous crime of all by choosing the cheapest product and trusting to luck? I do hope not. Selecting the right microbiocide is important. Does it act against the microorganisms you need it to tackle? Do you want a formulation that's fast or slow acting? And has its effectiveness been tested on the surface or surfaces you're going to clean? Get it wrong and all you might end up doing is spreading localised contamination over a wider area during wiping. So, once you've carefully chosen your hard surface cleaning product, how do you instruct your staff on how to get the best out of it and to use it safely? Environmental hard surface disinfection is usually practiced by gently wiping a surface with a damp cloth. But what you need to do is apply plenty of pressure and use enough of your chosen product to get the job done. You also need to change your cloths regularly because the dirt lifted will weaken the chemical's bug killing capacity. Otherwise, all you end up doing is spreading those bugs around again. If you're purchasing microbiocides for your own staff to use, or you're about to appoint a cleaning contractor, take a little time to think about these issues. Why not talk to LeisureSafe about infection control training for in-house cleaning staff and contract cleaners? It could prevent an outbreak, avoid bad publicity, and probably save you some money at the same time. Here's a typical hotel room where a guest has vomited. They've just left the hotel, so the room's empty. But before they went, they were asked questions to get some idea what caused the illness. So have you only just, have you just been in your room since you said It bears all the hallmarks of a norovirus. So action needs to be taken. It's maybe tempting to go straight in with a respirator on and start cleaning up. But it's far better to leave it a couple of hours for any aerosols in the vomit to settle. Ooh, it can't smell very good in there. The first thing to do is open the window to dilute the air in the room with fresh air from outside. All the disposable items in the room need to be put in a black bag. and all the towels and linen into a red soluble bag which needs to be tied up straight away. Every hard surface in the room needs to be sprayed using your microbiocidal chemical of choice. Hand contact surfaces need special attention. Using a pressurised trigger bottle helps to get enough chemical out quickly. The chemical being used has proven to be effective against a virus, used in the scientific testing of microbiocides, which is closely related to norovirus. It has a 10 minute contact time, so you wait while it does its work before wiping it off. Once you start wiping, spray cleaning cloths with the chemical and wipe the hand contact surfaces, which were sprayed earlier using physical force to remove dead bugs. In a room like this, probably four or five cloths should be used. Two for the bathroom, two for the main living area, and one for going back over the things which will be handled by the next occupant.
When you've finished, put used cloths and disposable aprons into the black bag and tie it up. The black bag can go straight to the skip, but the red one needs to go off to the laundry, where the staff should be warned to expect it. Finally, before leaving the room, use an alcohol rub to disinfect your hands. So, that's the typical hard surface decontamination process for a hotel room where someone has vomited. In principle, the same process can be used just as effectively in a hospital ward or a care home for dealing with most bugs, but only as part of a package of measures that make up your documented infection control plan. You might be wondering what can be done with soft furnishings inside the room, or why the cleaner wasn't wearing a face mask, why no fogging or steam cleaning was done, and whether the room can now be prepared for the next occupant. Well, Leisure Safe, supported by virologist Dr Peter Wynne-Jones, can help you with the answers and provide you with a range of practical infection control solutions for reducing the risk of an outbreak, raising hygiene awareness amongst staff so they become a highly effective early warning system, and putting in place an easy to follow but comprehensive plan to deal with an outbreak should it happen. To find out more, visit the Leisure Safe news page and then give them a call for a friendly, informal discussion about what they can do for you.